What is up good peoples? Now, what I wanna do in this video is something that I didn't prepare, again, because you like it, and I don't care what you say, you like it, but just kidding, I'm also going to create these obstacles that we have over here, such as the spike, so we have this one, and I'm also going to use this spike, and probably this one, to make it fall on the player. So first things first, I'm going to call this one spike, not spider, it's spike one. And let me just copy this. This was going to be two and this one's going to be three. And this one, let me just resize it a little bit. Let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I believe it can be done. So let's go just quickly here to see, maybe. I think this is okay. Yep, this can be okay. Maybe we can put it at 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So 0 0.4, 0 0.4, there you go. And voila, these are going to be our spikes. And by the way, by the way, by the way, try to create this on your own. I'm going to create these spikes. These are, these are just going to stand still, this one. So no biggie, no brainer about that one. But these two are going to fall. So they are going to be connected, you know, or basically they are going to hang above and then they will fall down when the player when the player is near them or when they detect that the player is below them so try to do that on your own as an assignment and post it below this one below this video that is now this one i'm going to attach a box collider and i think this is okay so let me just go here and resize them just a little bit so again resizing them maybe like this over here and like this over here, there you go. And of course tag these bad boys with the enemy tag and of course do the same thing for both of these, so enemy, enemy. Now for two and three, let me first resize them. Let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.5, you know, still too large, 2.2, there you go. I believe two can do. Well, two can do for the first one, but for this one, I still think 0 0.4, 0 0.4, something like that. Why is this? Okay, some weird thing happening over here. Let me try it like this. Okay, they are like this. So they are, you know, sh weirdly shaped. Let me try these three. Well, yeah, no. Simply we're going to use them like this. So this one is going to be 0.4 and 0.4 like that. And I am going to select this bad boy and attach a box collider on it and attach a rigid body to the on it and do the same thing for these two. So box collider first and rigid body second, rigid body, there you go. Now for both of these, I'm going to make them a trigger and they are tagged as enemy tag. And both of these I'm going to rotate. I believe it's 180 degrees, yes, there you go. So what I wanna do essentially is this. I want to make them hang. So for example, they're hanging over here and they're hanging over here and they are going to detect when the player, you know, passes by here. As soon as that happens, they are going to start to fall down. How do you think we can make that happen? So let me just lower the volume. When I make a mistake, you don't hear that boop, boop sound. How do you think we can make that happen? Of course, the first thing that we need to do is go here in the scripts, obstacle scripts, and over here, I am going to say hanging for whatever reason, it did not create, there you go, hanging spike and attach this script on both of these spikes. So over here, hanging, or simply, you know, search for the spike. There you go. And I'm going to double click this and open it. If you don't want to wait every single day until I publish all of these videos, you can access them right away in my Game Development Academy. You will see YouTube tutorial series, and there you will find all of the videos for this tutorial series. Click the link down below, check it out for a small monthly fee. You have all of these tutorials, plus, 80 other courses with more than 500 hours of content for you to learn game development for Unreal Engine, Unity, and so on and so forth. Click the link down below and check it out. By the way, I didn't pre-record this, I didn't pre-script it, that is, I didn't create the script, I'm not looking at my second monitor and, and seeing the solution and just, you know, typing it out and explaining. No, I'm doing this from my own head. So the first thing that I'm going to do over here is not a serialized field, but I need to get a private rigid body 2D, my awesome body. And we also need over here a serialized field, a private layer mask, which is going to be the player layer. Player layer! 
So inside of the awake function, my body is going to be equal to get component. And we're going to get a reference to the rigid body to D. And of course, remove the zero from here. And then we are going to detect if we, you know, if we can detect the player. And from here, I think I can, hmm. This can be left like this, but over here, void detect player. So detect player, there you go. And what we can do over here is we can raycast. So we can raycast and try to hit the player. And if that happens, then we are going to simply fall down. Now, before we do any of that, in order to prevent the falling down, we do need to set here the gravity scale to be zero on both of our rigid bodies because if we set the gravity scale to zero and if i hit the play button nothing will happen they stand still but if i for example select spike one and click here gravity scale and set it to one there you go look at that it fell down now make sure that you set the rendering or the sorting layer for all of these to the enemy so spike one two and three and i can go back over here now and we also need a private raycast hit 2D and I'm going to say this player hit. So essentially what we are going to do is we are going to say here player hit. So it's player hit. It's going to be equal to physics 2D dot raycast. And we are going to raycast from the current position, which is transform that position towards the vector to down direction. And the distance can be, for example, 100, some, you know, large number. And then we can say over here, player mask, not player hit, but mask. There you go. And did I call it? No, I call it player layer, player layer. And over here, if we do have the player hit, then what we are going to do is we are going to say over here, our body or my awesome body that gravity scale is equal to one and it will start to fall down. But we also need to be able to deactivate this and I will tell you in a second what I mean by that. So here in the update, we are going to say detect player and there you go. So if I were to go back now, also, let me just quickly draw the, this array so that we can see what we are doing. So I'm going to say here debug dot draw array and we're going to draw array from our transform position, transform position towards the vector two dot down, multiply 100 and the color is going to be red because I'm multiplying with 100 because this is the length of the array that the of the array that we are throwing down. So I'm going to show you how that looks like. So if I go back in the scene, look at that. So it doesn't have to be 100. 100 is large, but you get the point. So when the player comes here and he touches this, then we are going to start to fall down. But for that, we do need to create the player layer because we currently only have the ground. So over here, I'm going to say player. So player layer. And over here, we are going to set the layer on the player. No, this object only. I don't want the children to have that. I don't want my children to be on that layer. And over here, select the player layer, which means if I go back, you will notice that as soon as we pass by, there you go. Look at that. It fell down, but we do have one issue. You know, it's falling down in, until infinity. Look at that. It's falling down and basically you get the point. It, it's falling down. <laughs> so, uh, how can we fix that? Well, we can fix it with two variables or one function and one variable. Over here, I can say private and bool player detected, something like that. And over here, I can say at the beginning, if the player is detected, we're going to return. And for those of you who don't know, in a void function, when you call return, it's simply going to exit outside of that function. Meaning, if this is true, if the player is detected, it will hit the return statement and all the code that's below the return statement, it will not get executed. So all the code below will not get executed at all and it will simply not get executed. There you go. So over here, if we, you know, select or if we touch the player then we're going to say here player detected is equal to true and why am i doing this like this well because i am going to 
have a timer or actually we don't need to have a timer we can simply create here deactivate object which is going to simply you know deactivate this game object we're going to say game object set active to false or simply destroy that's your preference and we're going to invoke it so over here we're going to call invoke and call it here after let's say three seconds for example something like that and there you go that's all there is to it now of course if this touches the player if you know we collide with the player we're going to kill the player that will happen inside of the player script so don't worry about that but this invoke or deactivate is only it can be called after two seconds and the reason for that is because we don't want this to be infinitely 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 in our game so if i go now and if i you see collide you will notice that after two seconds it got deactivated there you go so it simply got deactivated if i try with this one there you go come on there you go it got deactivated and voila there you go we have falling spikes which is really cool so let's go over here inside of the prefabs and the obstacle prefabs and simply drag them so we have one we have two and we have three and there you go so there you go if something was not clear when it comes to this video over here now as a precaution somebody will ask why don't we use cancel invoke well inside of our player we're simply going to kill the player when this touches the player we're simply going to kill the player without killing the enemy at all simply destroying the player and restarting the game and so on and so forth so there is no need but you can do that as a precaution and on disable so you can do something like on disable you can call the cancel invoke on this one so you can say cancel invoke there you go so that you know you can sleep calmly now just kidding but anyways if something was not clear when it comes to this one we already did this you should understand what this here is ray casting detecting gravity scale is you know part of rigid body that you know determines if the gravity will affect the player or not simple simple code simple logic as always but ask a question down below I will not mind if something is not clear and I will see you guys in the next video.